money has only one job, it should work as a medium of exchange. But money's value comes from more than that. Only when the people who use cash agree that a particular coin, bill, or paper can be used to buy goods and services does that piece of money have value. Capital dates back to the dawn of civilization, and its use as a medium of exchange is ingrained in us as a species. For example, the people of Yap Island used a strange currency called Fei, huge, heavy stone wheels. They were so heavy that they often remained with the previous owner after an exchange. The system worked because the Yapis agreed that the ownership of Fei could settle debts. To have a controlled supply of currency, a society needs some kind of trust in its money. If just anyone could create new money, money would lose its value. There needs to be a limited amount of it for the system to work. Mining for gold is hard work. There are pickaxes involved in early mornings in the mountains. Bitcoin mining, however, is just running a powerful computer rig that solves complex problems and lots of electricity as you mine for your digital gold. Compared with traditional currency systems, bitcoins can be transferred from one person to another in a short amount of time and with minimal costs. Bitcoin mining is like a giant lottery where you compete with your mining hardware with everyone on the network to earn bitcoins. Faster Bitcoin mining hardware can attempt more tries per second to win this lottery while the Bitcoin network itself adjusts roughly every two weeks to keep the rate of finding a winning block hash to every 10 minutes. In the big picture, Bitcoin mining secures transactions recorded in Bitcoin's public ledger, the blockchain. Once a new block is created, the public can ensure that transactions have been validated and approved. Banking was formed in the Middle Ages when bankers started serving as middlemen between savers and borrowers. They kept meticulous records of their business transactions, which provided security to all parties involved. Today's banking system still follows this same path. However, banks have not innovated for over a thousand years. With Bitcoin, we remove the middleman and cut fees to the bone. In the 14th century, the Medici family enjoyed a lucrative monopoly on banking services for wealthy families in Italy. Despite their privileged position, the Medicis sought to streamline the banking system by making it more accessible to savers and borrowers throughout the region. This required the Medici family to make a concerted effort to keep detailed records of incoming and outgoing finances, a task that required substantial time and effort. This positioned them as middlemen of all transactions, yielding their riches from the fees attached to every transaction mediated. Banks have long held power to influence governments and markets. Thanks to lobbying, they have exerted their will to an extreme degree. Cryptocurrencies are quickly changing the way people think about money and finance. They offer a new system that prevents banks from gaining too much control over currency, making them attractive for investors looking to be a part of a new financial movement. Buyers often don't pay a fee, but sellers often do. So there's an additional cost built into the price of items. This is why many shops won't take cards if you're buying just one coffee or a snack. With Bitcoin, however, there's no middleman collecting fees. Bitcoin makes transactions faster and cheaper than other payment methods like credit cards. The best thing about cryptocurrency is the anonymity it offers. In the past, you would have to use a bank or financial institution to complete a transaction of any value. Because of this, your identity could be compromised and information about you could be leaked. With cryptocurrency, you can buy things anonymously, with Bitcoin especially, which keeps your data safe from hackers of all kinds.